on the Level Talk Show. You're tuned to On A Level with Ancobia. This is Muta Baruka. Get ready for some of the hottest talk on radio. The On A Level Talk Show addresses issues that matter to you. Ancobia with On A Level. A very good day to you. Welcome to New Style Radio. It's the Honor Level Talk Show with me and Kobia. Listening to the sounds of Pharaoh Monek and the song is called You're Beautiful. I should say Pharaoh Monk. <laughs> yes, the song is called You're Beautiful. Such a sweet, sweet song. Hope you've all had a great, great weekend. I'm so glad to be back here once again. Yes, the Honor Level Talk Show. Now, now, we have a very special show lined up for you today. I told you last week that we're going to be interviewing an African priest on today's show. We're going to be looking at love through African eyes. All right, oftentimes on this show, you'll hear us talk about how important it is to live our lives from an African-centered perspective through an African-centered framework returning to the ways of our ancestors who spent thousands of years creating systems so that they and their descendants that is us you and I could live in harmony on this planet and also come to live on the earth as true God men and women now oftentimes when looking at African history we tend to do so in a very fragmented manner with the belief that all African traditional systems were actually um, destroyed and so they have no use to us anymore. But I am aware that there is a growing interest in Africa, albeit through the Nigerian <laughs> Nollywood industry, where there's been a massive, um, a big intake in this country, in the Caribbean as well, of African descendants watching African movies and sitcoms and things like that, and almost kind of getting to understand Africa in a slightly different perspective. However, sometimes when I watch those programs and those sitcoms and they portray African traditional beliefs, they do so in a very backward, in a very naive manner, very biased manner. So they don't change our views and perceptions about how we actually see Africa. All right. But still, it's nice to know that there are many of us who are, you know, actually taking the time to sit down and get a kind of an introduction to African culture. But today you're going to get a real introduction to African religion, an ancient African system. All right. One of the questions some of us often ask is, did our ancestors leave ways for us to live on this earth? Did they give us instructions about love and marriage, how to cultivate and create successful relationships? Did they come to concrete and conclusive ideas about the true nature of man and woman and our purpose on earth? Sometimes we think no. No, they didn't leave us with any instruction, anything. We just think, well, it's all gone. And, you know, just remember them once a year around October during Black History Month. And then we forget about them throughout the rest of the year. But the brother I'm going to be speaking to today, Priest Kevin C. from the All Sayer of Set Society in London. This is an organization that they walk with their ancestors every single day, 24-7. They live African culture. They see the world through African eyes, through an African-centered paradigm. They don't leave out Africa for one minute of the day. And really does give me great pleasure to be able to bring on our brother today, Priest Kemensi, who is the head priest and chief from the Orsa or Set Society down there in London. And I'm really excited to be speaking with our brother today so we can get some understanding of love and relationships from an African perspective because most people just think well love is love and we don't think that we've been indoctrinated or we've had other cultures put upon us that have somehow changed our traditional perspectives of how we would naturally see relationships love marriage man and woman and things like that so let me just give you a little bit of a background onto the Osir society and the Osirian religion the Orset Society is a Pan-African religious organization which was founded in 1973 by Ra Unefa Amen. On Kobia with On A Level on New Style Radio 98.7 FM. 
It is based in Brooklyn, New York, with several chapters in major cities across the United States, as well as chapters in places like London. Um, I will be speaking to the London chapter, also Toronto, Canada, Bermuda, and in other countries in the West Indies. And I actually played, if you are familiar with the On A Level Talk show, last year, June Black History Month, I actually played you a two-hour lecture by Ra Unefa Amen on the importance of African spiritual science, African spiritual society, <laughs> African spiritual science, and the African family as well. Now, the organization was created for the purpose of providing members a societal framework through which the Kemetic, that is the ancient Egyptian spiritual way of life, can be lived daily, and it functions as an international body teaching various disciplines to students around the world. The organization provides an African-centered based spiritual training to the African diasporian community. The religion uses elements of ancient Egyptian religions such as the Tree of Life as the basis of its cosmology and philosophical underpinning. It seeks to reunite the traditions of the founders of that civilization into a spirituality empowering way of life that aims at the awakening of the divine self known in their religion as the Osir principle and they seek to awaken the Osir principle within each individual. The Osirian religious system has at its essence the establishment of an intimate relationship with God. It teaches that the realization of the God consciousness is the highest purpose of life on earth. Its fundamental tenet holds that since man and woman are made in the likeness of God, then we also share the same divine attributes, qualitatively, although not quantitatively. That is, we have all the potential of omnipresence, omniscience and omnipotence, just not in the same magnitude. With the exception of sages, um, that is, those persons who we might regard as priests and highly spiritual men and women, these qualities remain dormant until awakened through spiritual cultivation. Since according to the Osirian religion, man is not bound to the frailties of the flesh and is therefore incapable of transcending human limitations, each and every experience in life can be viewed as an opportunity and vehicle for spiritual development that will eventually lead to the realization of the indwelling divinity. Thus, the Osirian religion promotes the use of every life experience as a means of bringing an individual's divine attributes to the forefront of human existence as the normal way of addressing all issues in life. Hence, the individual must live by divine law, ma'at, while interacting on the physical plane, thus making one's body and one's life even a fit vessel through which God's divine attributes can be of service to all creation all over the world. Wow! According to the Osirian theology of ancient Egypt, the symbol for realizing the divine potential is Osir, a misnomer Osiris by the Greeks. Okay, so the Greeks said Osiris, but that was incorrect. Um, a means through which this realization can be achieved is through meditation, which is symbolized by Osir, again misnomer Isis. So, let me introduce our guest on our show today. And I know he's going to tell you a lot more about the Osir Society than I ever possibly could. Brother Kevin C, welcome to the On The Level Talk Show. Hey to Poo. Hey to Poo. How are you doing? I'm well, you know. Yes. Very well indeed. Okay, so you're ready to speak to folks in the Midlands. Yes, been, um, we've been coming to Birmingham, I suppose, on and off for quite a few years. Yes. And this is a great opportunity so for us to share our way of life with people who are interested. So thank you for inviting us. You're more than welcome. Now, I know a lot of people, when they think, oh, and Kobe's bringing an African priest onto the show, they're going to think they're going to hear an African accent. <laughs> well, yes. uh, you know, um, what is Africa? Yes. You know, that's one of the, the major issues that we suddenly have this belief that because we were born in the Caribbean or in England, we're no longer Africans. And the question I ask people like that is, a Siamese cat born in China is still a Siamese cat. Mm -hmm. Siamese cat born in London is a Siamese cat. Yes. Siamese cat born in Russia is a Siamese cat. So if the animals can retain their identity, why do we lose ours? Because we're born away from the motherland. Yes. Yes. 
But tell us, Kevin C., as a Jamaican brother, how did you come to be an African priest? Was okay, you born in this first, country um, or was you born in Jamaica? Yes, let me first introduce myself. In mm -hmm. My name is Owa, Owa Kemensi. Owa is a title, it's a title of kingship. Yes. And that is because the Osiris Set Society runs its communities through the ancient order of kingship. Yes. Not in the in terms of Western idea of kingship or royalty, um, in terms of people bowing down to you and so on. But a king is a servant of his people, mm -hmm. and is therefore committed to uplifting him or herself to the highest level of spirituality. Yes, and in so doing, is then able to you know guide and help others on their way mm -hmm. so that's that's my first introductory piece there okay so you're a king in the society and you're also the chief priest yes the mm -hmm. king in in anasara said always has to be a priest yes um, as it was in ancient kamet now the question you asked me was how somebody born in jamaica mm -hmm. um, became an african priest mm -hmm. well the truth be told, you know, I remember at the age of seven, playing in the back of my yard, and my mother said to me, you know, what are you going to do in life? And I said to her, I'm going to be a priest and a doctor. Wow. And she looked at me, and that was the end of that conversation. <laughs> so um, I left Jamaica at the age of 14. Mm-hmm and came to England and ran into racism at its ugliest. And that experience made me turn my back on God. Wow. Because, you know, what I saw in my community were people who were Christians, who were fervent, God-fearing, loving, kind people. And yet we were faced in situations where Jesus didn't come to help us. God didn't come to help us. We prayed, we were forgiving, we turned the other cheek, and I said, no, something is wrong with this system. This way of thinking is incorrect. Yes. So I became a Marxist. But, you know, it didn't sit well with me because there was no mention of God. And I knew deep down inside that there is a God. Yes. There is a way of connecting with that supreme being, that divinity. So, you know, I, I was a martial artist from the age of 14, and I had some very good Taoist teachers, mm -hmm. Chinese masters, who were not just Kung Fu teachers, but who were practicing Taoists. Ah. So I began to read the Tao Te Ching and the Yi Jing, but it still didn't satisfy me, although I understood that the, the blacks of southern China, the Naks, um, brought the African tradition and way of life to China, all the way to China. Mm -hmm. it, didn't, it didn't touch me, and I became a Pan-Africanist, very political individual. And I went to Ghana in 1982, and I was devastated with what I found. Christianity all over Ghana and traditional African religion was something on the back burner. Yes, something yes. Something people were ashamed of. Yes. And that troubled my spirit. And I was doing my Qigong and Tai Chi. I entered into what is called trance. Mm -hmm. And it came very clear to me that one of the things that I must do on returning to England was I had to find a spiritual teacher, an African spiritual teacher. So I, I came back and I went to Head Start Books. Oh, Pepper Kai's place. Pepper Kai yes. and um, Brother um, Kwasi's bookshop. Yes. And I walked in and I picked up this book. You know, uh, this, this, this is this uncanny thing that when I need a book, I walk into a place and I can just, you know, if something comes to me, the book comes to me. Yes. And I picked up this book by a man called 
R.A. Strawn, and it was about the ageless wisdom. Yes, yes. And I read the preface, and I said, oh, my God. And I ran out of the shop with the book. I don't even know if I paid for the book. <laughs> uh, <laughs> well, Pepe Kai and Brother Kwasi knows me well, so I don't yeah. think they were alarmed. <laughs> so I ran to a phone box and I called my wife and I said to my wife, I found him. And she said, found who? And I said, I found my teacher. Mm. And she said, well, what's his name? And I said, R.A. Strawn. She says, how do you know it's not a white man? I said to her, a white man could never write this book. Yes. You know, and that was it. I got on a plane maybe two days later, flew to New York <laughs> and... Um, I had this wonderful meeting with the Shechem or Shechem, Rawan F. Rawan the first, And that was 20 years or 20 something, 20 something years ago. And you've never looked back since. And that brought me home. Wow. That is a story and then some. Yes, well, yes, it was, it was, a, it was a major piece in my life. So tell us then, Kevin C., how does your religion, the Osarian religion, how does it differ from our understanding of traditional religions like Islam and Christianity? Well, let's have a look at the word religion first. R-E-L-I-G-I-O-N. Re means to return. Legion means to tie. Tie back. Yes. You see that? Uh -huh. um, so it's to tie you back. Legion is coming from the Latin ligari, legal, and leg, like ligament, which ties, you know. Yes. So religion is something that ties you back to what you once were. Now, according to the Christian Bible, it said, and God said, let us, note us, yes, make man in our own likeness. Us and our, the plural. Yes, not the okay. singular. Mm-hmm. So, our way of our understanding and our knowing of God is that God has made us in its own likeness, not in his political. Many people have died for that old thing of his mm -hmm. uh, and so on. Has made us in its own likeness. And therefore, I share in the qualities of God. Yes. And what do we say and what can we say about God is that God is omniscient, omnipresent, and omnipotent. So qualitatively, I share in that likeness. So if I share in the likeness of God, then I do not need a savior. I don't need an intermediary for me to connect with the supreme being so you don't need a jesus or a muhammad i don't mm -hmm. i need wise men and wise women who having traveled the road of divinity can then instruct those of us who are awakening to our understanding of self yes so in that respect we totally differ we say that it is man's freedom of choice to choose to become God or to remain an animal or a human being. Mm -hmm. So in that respect, you know, our religion and our spiritual practices, and many black people are running away from the word religion because of a misunderstanding and the misuse of the Western Judaic system. Yes. But as African people, we have to understand that words, that religion was not coined in a fish market. Mm. They were coined in temples where men and women who were dedicating themselves to rising above their animal and human nature to embrace the ba division of their spirit. What do you um, mean, the ba di division? Terms. What do you mean, the ba division of the spirit? Well, Is that the there highest are point? seven levels to the spirit. When people say spirit, they don't understand what spirit is. They think it's just this one, uh, you know, monolithic thing. Mm -hmm. The spirit is broken up into seven divisions. Mm -hmm. The highest division of the spirit is the bar division, which is where the divine spirit, 
dwells. And it is each and every woman and man's destiny to return to the ba, the, the God part of him or herself. Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, okay? Yes, so yes. we differ in that respect that we say that each and every man can become and should become and must become a divine being. A divine being. In other words, we are gods. Yes. Right? We were born God infants, but must grow to an adult God through our living expression of the spiritual laws. So do you like pray to a God? You know, if, if you were to ask for help or do you go to your ancestors and call upon them for help? No. Yeah. Because the Supreme Being gave us everything that we need to deal with the issues that come up, the life situations that we experience in our daily lives. Mm -hmm. We've been given a destiny. Each and every one has a destiny. And of course, that destiny unfolds differently for each and every one of us. Yes. So we have to travel that road to destiny because Destiny means destination. Mm -hmm. You have a place to go. Yes. The great book of the Yi Jing, the Chinese Taoist book, says it furthers one to have somewhere to go. Yes. And that somewhere that we have to return to is our divine self-image. Mm -hmm. And the situations in our lives are the teachers and the, the steps that we use to return to our God self. So we pray in by meditating to activate the latent principles within us. Mm -hmm. As you, you mentioned in your introductory, you said the tree of life. Yes. In Kamet, in Africa, it's called the Pawut Neteru, yes. which predates the Hebrew tree of life. Yes, the Kabbalah. Exactly. Yes. The Kabbalistical teachings says Tree of Life. Mm -hmm. The Kemitic, the Kamau, said Pawut Neteru, the manifestation of God in its different forms. So your religion is very much, well, from what I'm hearing, it's, it's very different to the traditional religions like Christianity and Islam. But it's very interesting because I was um, interviewing Ashok Kwezi last year yes. and he was telling us that, you know, Christianity itself was founded upon this very religion that you're living well of course because yes. you see let's let's Heru, we, Jesus we back, yes they said that there was a man called Moses let's not we won't debate whether he lived or not because the word Moses means mesh yes and mesh is a child no one in Kamek would call somebody mesh you see they talk about let me give you an example there is Tehuti Mesh the first mm -hmm. so Tehuti is the name is a mesh of Tehuti, is a child of Tehuti. So the word Moses means mesh, okay? Yes. A meshu is a child, okay? So this man called Moses, let's say, let's give him his Moses. They said he was a Hebrew child that was cast in the rivers and was rescued by Oset, oh sorry, the princess, and um, brought into the royal house and grew up and was trained as a committed priest, right? All his life, he was trained as a committed priest. Then Moses became the lawgiver of the Hebrews. Now, where did he get his training from to yes. become yeah, the leader? Yes. Not only that, his brother Aaron, who was a Levi, and the Levites were the only people in Hebrew, in the Hebrew tradition, who could be priests. Aaron was an Egyptian, yes. trained in Egypt. Yes. So immediately we can see that there was a transference of, of knowledge, spiritual teachings, and that the so-called leaders, or you know, the, that the Moses who led these people out of quote-unquote captivity, because was there an exodus? Let's leave that question. Well, Ashokwezi says clearly no. <laughs> well, of course, yes. historical evidence doesn't, doesn't, doesn't yes. prove it. Anyway, and then where did they go? They went to the land of Canaan and then borrowed from the Canaanites further instructions. 
Mm. So that's the first thing yes. we can say about Christianity. I'm not putting anybody's religion down. Yes. But I'm just basically saying that the root of Christianity, the root of Islam, the root of these major religions came out of Africa. Okay. In going back to Africa and looking at the traditional religions, are there similarities between the Osirian religion and, for example, some of the religions you may have saw in Ghana, the traditional religions, if you came across any? Well, to be quite honest with yeah. you, you know, I didn't see much of the traditional mm -hmm. religious practice. I know that there are certain African priests, very powerful African priests in yes. Ghana, people who advise the Asante Heni. Yes. Um, He's a one of the major advisors to the Asante, and he is a traditional African priest in, mm -hmm. in, in the footstep of Akonfanachi, who was the priest who brought the, the Akan nation together, who mm -hmm. unified the Akan people. So I know I was fortunate enough to meet with the granddaughters of Queen Mother Ya Asantiwa. There is some elements of the traditional practices there, Yes. I, I cannot say that there is, I, can, I, I know that they have certain deities which are in alignment with the Kemitic gods, yes. um, so to speak, or aspects of God. Mm -hmm. And also in terms of the Yoruba tradition, there are some correspondences. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, the difference for us is that the tree that we call the tree of life, the power Neteru, the 11 aspects of God are, they are brought together in the principle of Osir. Yes. So Osir is the actual power Neteru, or for want of a better word, the tree of life. Yes. So yes. Just, what, it's not just, it's not 11 aspects coalesce into the principle of Osir. Okay. Now... So to become an Osir is to live the 11 laws. And when one lives the 11 laws, one then becomes an Osir. Reasoning Empowerment for the Community with Ancobia on 98.7 News Style Radio. We are not going back into the past merely as an academic exercise. We are going back into the past because we are a shattered people. But we are not a lost people because we can find again those shattered pieces and put them back together again so that we can find once more a certain dynamic continuity and wholeness. That is what our history is about. We are going back in order to resurrect ourselves. We are going back into the past in order to remake the present so that we could go into the future with a new confidence. The Honor Level Talk Show. This is what we are trying to recapture. Birmingham's number one for African arts, culture, and Afro edutainment. edutainment. 98.7 New Style. So today is we want to look at love through an African-centered perspective. Okay. Recently on the Unlevel Talk Show, we've been doing a series of shows uh -huh. in which we actually focus we focused upon the difficulties that we sometimes experience in our relationships as black men and women. Yes. And I must say it was a very interesting series of shows and the psychotherapists come on and they kind of gave us their perspective on having listened to the shows how they viewed relationships what i really want to do today is kind of introduce just briefly our listeners to a religion that actually looks at love from an african framework and perspective as a married man before you came into an African-centered way of life. How did you view relationships and women? Well, the most, I suppose, instructive thing that I had in my life was that I had very strong women around me. My mother, yes. and I've got two aunts that live in Wolverhampton, and they were the pillars upon which my life... My father was there. My father was a very... He was a man who is a businessman, and he had a number of things that he did. But one of the things he did was that he cultivated Sundays as the day that he spent with me. But in spite of that, the influences were women. 
and I began to understand that having gone into spirituality because my tutelary deity is all set. So I was very kind of um, open to the influence that came from my mother and my aunt. Mm -hmm. So I have this profound respect of womanhood. However, obviously, being brought up in the West, I didn't always behave with that respect towards my female companions. Mm -hmm. So, you know, the usual gallivanting, <laughs> um, you know, and just not behaving as an African man, as yes. a, more as a, as a Western boy, uh -huh. thinking that, uh, you know, one was God's gift to women. So my early life was a life of, like most, men not something that one could be proud of okay in saying that i got married very early mm -hmm. how old were you after university i i got married about the age of 21 because okay. I, I went to university around right about 17 yes so um i got married then to my child's sweetheart yes um and you know that didn't work for the very reason that you've been talking about on your show yes um and you know I had a child and so on and, and just kept on going in and out of relationships and not really being able to to settle. Mm -hmm. Fortunately for me, I met my wife 27 years ago and, you know, we've been married ever since and having gone into African spirituality, it cemented that relationship and I'm enjoying a, a wonderful time. Oh, give thanks. <laughs> it's nice yeah. to hear someone say that, that oh, you're having yeah, a good time. Great. Yes. Now, it's funny because when we look at love from a European perspective, it's kind of that mushy type of love, you know, the kind of the heart palpitating. And when I saw you, I fell in love and I couldn't breathe properly. And oh my God, my heart was beating 10 to the dozen. And oh, I, 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 I started to blush. And that means that I was in love with you at first sight. But it's. Well, yes. <laughs> Yes, because let's look at it from this perspective. Uh -huh. One, when, when people use the word love, they equate it with sex. Yes. Okay? So another great word has been reduced to, you know, a peripheral aspect or, or you know, an important aspect of a relationship, but not to be glorified. Mm -hmm. I mean, let's put a definition down on the table. Love, from an African perspective, is giving, seeking nothing in return uh -huh. love is giving seeking nothing in return okay so when a person says to you i love you is that what they're saying when you say to someone i love you is that what you're saying are you saying to the person you know i am prepared to give to you the best of me and the best of me is my divinity therefore because I love you and I am going to dedicate my life to become that God woman, that God man, so that I can love without seeking, without wanting back. You scratch my back, I scratch yours. You know, if, if, if the phone rings and you're on it and my heart doesn't beat, then I'm no longer in love with you. My stomach doesn't turn when I see you. I'm no longer in love with you. What are you doing when you equate love with those physiological expressions? Yes. You are giving in to your animal nature. Yes. You see that? You are giving in to your sensual nature. And that is the main reason, you know, why relationships are not working. But let me stick a pin there, as we say. The major cause of the epidemic in terms of relationship in the black community is Western culture. You see, too many times black men, black women, diss each other. Oh, the man is not a man. The woman is not a woman. No. The problem is not in the individual. Mm -hmm. Let me ask you a question. If you had two healthy Fish, fish, right? Fish, yes. right? Mm -hmm. And you put them in a contaminated pool. Would those healthy fishes become unwell? Most certainly. Most certainly. 
So that's what we have. We are living in a contaminated, toxic culture. And in a contaminated, toxic culture, our relationship are not thriving. Why? Not only because of the culture, but because there are social practices that have put in place to destabilize the African family. Mm -hmm. You see, if we, if we look at love and look at relationship and we look at them and we don't look at them in the context of the culture that we are living in, the values, the social order that we live in, we will continue to blame the individual. And that's a white people's thing. But some people may say that, well, I've been married for 20 years and I don't follow any African tradition or religion and, and I'm happy. Of course. Well, let's examine that happiness. What is happiness? You know, I'm sure many people have held together through thick and thin, and that's fine. You see, but what is the purpose of marriage? The purpose of marriage is to help you and I to rise to our divine nature. Mm -hmm. You see that? You see, it's not to have kids. It's not to own a house. That's not the purpose of marriage. The purpose of marriage is a union, you see, and marriage is not a thing between individuals. You see, look at what we call marriage today. You and I getting married, going off, buying our 2.6 or 3.5 bedrooms, you know, and <laughs> raising our children, and we are married. Yes. No, a marriage is between families. And that's another reason why we're having the problems that we're having. Yes. Because we're approaching marriage and from individual perspective. We are Westerners. Yes. And that's the, the crux of the issue. Yes. It's our approach, you know, the cultural approach. I mean, you go into a party, you eyeball a guy. The guy eyeballs you and, oh, he must like me. Mm -hmm. And then the next thing you know, you're on another level. You don't know anything about the man. The man doesn't know anything about you, but yet still, you know, if that stranger walked up to you and said to you, my sister, can I kiss you? What would you do? I but the moment the man <laughs> says, I love you, his spit becomes honey. Yes. You know, in Africa, <laughs> oh, call kissing, eating dirt. Yes. Now, I've, I've said a number of things there. Yes. Um, but to get back to love, one has to really understand that word. You know, too many of us use it, I love you. What does that, when a person says, I love you, what are they saying to you? And when you say you love them, are you saying the same thing? You see, we got to understand that we have to get back to an African paradigm. Yes. If we want to, if we want to stop bemoaning this quandary, you know, of the devastating state of our family. People talk relationships. I'm talking family. Yes. See, because the family and you're talking is the nucleus of a nation. And you're also talking culture as yes. well. Yes, you're talking culture, having a family, relationships, marriage within a cultural framework. Work. Absolutely. And that's our problem. Mm -hmm. You see, because we have, we have bought into Western cultural ideas. In actual fact, there's a sickness that we as black people suffer from. And it's called post-traumatic Western cultural syndrome, mm -hmm. right? That is the sickness that we're suffering from, oh, right? Okay. We, it's like we are afflicted with the uncultural values of Western quote-unquote civilization. Okay, stick a pin. Let's, I will. let's just, um, before we open our phone lines, let me just give you um, kind of a, a scenario here. A brother comes to you and says, Priest, come and see. I've met the most beautiful woman. Um, I want to be in a relationship with her. I'm sure this is the woman I'm meant to marry. What would you say to that brother as a Kemetian priest? Okay. Firstly, the first thing I would say to him is, are you ready for marriage? Yes. So I would consult the oracles. And I would ask the question, please comment on brother so-and-so readiness for a relationship. I will then be told the major issues that this brother would have to work on to prepare himself for a relationship. Mm -hmm. So unless that reading was, yes, this man is ready because he's done this work, I would say, first, my brother, take six months, 
work on developing your character and come again. Wow. Okay? You and see, you can determine this via right? the oracles. There are five basic things for a relationship, for forming a spiritual relationship. Yes. One is spiritual culture. Uh-huh. The other is spiritual readings. The third one is meditation. The fourth is social accountability. And the fifth is healthy lifestyle. Wow. Five major things that must be in place for one to embark on a spiritual relationship. And is this how our ancestors in um, ancient Kemet, ancient Egypt, lived their lives? These are the principles on which the Osirian religion is based. Yes. Remember, we are, we are directly practicing what Nama, or let's say from the 18th all the way through, you know, Menkara, Kafra, Khufu, Pepe the first, Pepe the second, Teotimesh the third, Teotimesh the second. You with me? Ramesh, not Ramesses, Ramesh, yes. the son of Ra. Right? We're talking about, you know, the queen mothers at Shepsut. Yes. You know, you've got to understand that this is what we practice. You see, and why are we practicing the ways of the African, the ancient Kemetic people? Because they held together as a political entity for 4,000 years. Mm. There is no civilization. Mm. America yes. is what, 300 years old? Yes. How old is Britain? 250 years old? I am talking about 4,000 years of political and social cohesion. Mm -hmm. And the practices that we, as the Osara said, society and nation base ourselves on is on those very same practices. Now, you mentioned the word oracles. Just right. tell us briefly before we take a commercial break. Many people, when they hear the word oracles, well, even when they hear the word African religion, you're going to be using oracles and things like that. They're thinking obia, juju, oh, yeah. voodoo. But when you say you would consult an oracle system to help this brother, what do you mean? Well, all right, let's, uh, an oracle is a divination system. Mm. A system which God has given man as a means to speak to God. Because right now, when you, you pray, God does not answer you directly. Uh -huh. Whereas, you know, God is a mathematician. God created the world based on mathematics. He's a scientist. Yes. He's a scientist. You understand me? So, the, you know, if you look at the computer system, we have something called binary mathematics. Mm -hmm. Well, the great oracles, the Yi Jing of China, the Ken Ken of China, the Ifa oracle of the Yoruba people, of Nigeria. and the Medunatir oracle are systems in which we use mathematical symbols to communicate. Mathematics is a language to communicate with the divine entity within. You wow. see that? So yes. it's a way of, you know, let's put it this way. It's intuitive guidance. Yes. One of the things we have to understand that in this Western world, we celebrate the mind. Yes. So-called logical, rational thinking. Mm -hmm. Okay? But we, you've heard the statement, logical, but not necessarily true. Yes, yes. So yes. in other words now, your logic is based on the premise that you read from. And if your premise is incorrect, then however logical you are, you might reason logically from an incorrect premise, but your conclusion is still going to be wrong because of the premise. Okay. Please okay. come and see. So I'm just, I'm what just... the mind can give you is possibility and probabilities. Yes. Okay. okay. It cannot tell you. Um, for example, you meet a man. This man has not cheated has not stolen, has not smoked any marijuana or indulged in any addiction. Okay, can we see? I'm going to ask you to hold there. I just need to take a quick advert break. Okay. And if any of our listeners want to call in and speak with Priest Kevin C, you can do so during the advert breaks. So stay locked, and I'll be back in just a short while speaking with Priest Kevin C from the All Say or Set Society based in London. Stay tuned at New Style Radio. On Cobia with On A Level. On New Style Radio, 98.7 FM. Catch it. I see them looking at turning the dial. Turning into B. 
big new style Wanna hear hip hop, wanna hear some soul Reggae music is under control You hear them talking about all the issues News of the community New style radio is a good station New style is for you and me And new style is not Welcome back to the On A Level Talk Show. Sound and strong one said that. Thank you very much for logging on to the On A Level Talk Show. The phones have been going crazy and I am asking those callers to please call back and speak with our guest tonight, Priest Kevin C. during the show, all right? So you can call back now and speak with our priest. I know some of you have some pressing questions you want to ask him. And he can answer them. <laughs> Rest assured, he can answer those questions. All right. Now, if you've just tuned on, I have Priest Kevin C on the telephone line all the way down there in London. He is the head priest of the Orsay or Set Society. Their headquarters is in Brooklyn, New York. And their spiritual leader is Ra Un Nefer Amen. And today he's speaking to us about love. Because during the last few weeks when we had shows talking about the problems that black men and women are having in our relationships, it came up over and over again. We need to go back to an African-centered perspective or, you know, where is the African principles and values in our relationships? Well, today he's taken time out of his busy schedule as a priest. He's also an acupuncturist and a homeopath. He's taken time out of his schedule to share with us his ideas on love, relationships and marriage from, of course, an African-centered perspective. Welcome back, and come and see. Uh, well, as a pro again. Okay. You know, just before we went off, right? Yes. You asked me about the oracles. Yes, yes, and you were asking me a question. Right, and you know, many people don't want people to use oracles. Okay? Yes. And Christians and people like that um, frown on it. Yes. But I want them to, to remember this. When Judas the disciple was going to be replaced. They cast lots. Yes. In other words, they consulted the oracle to then ordain the next disciple. Yes. Moses too used to cast lots as well. The two men. Yes. You know, so we have to be very mindful that, you see, when a man does not want you to know self, he first has to destroy the very fabric of your culture yes first he has to separate you from god and then separate you from family yes you see that These okay are just the practices that are always used to destabilize and Your destroy culture. people okay let's go to the phone lines come and see we do have a caller holding on the line sure. hello caller hello. welcome hello yes who am i speaking to please marisha marisha thank you for holding it's okay okay what would you like to say to priest come and see um, first of all, I'd just like to say that, oh my gosh, I'm sitting here listening to what he's talking about and it's just making so much sense. And it's so nice to hear somebody speaking on that level. You know, it's absolutely brilliant. There's one thing I'd like to pick up on. When you were talking about relationships and, um, you know, when you give love and you, you expect nothing in return. There's so much love you can give and expect nothing in return, but eventually, if the other person's treating you you know, if you're giving somebody unconditional love and the other person's treating you in a bad way, eventually, you know, I just want to know, when, when's the stop point? When do you actually turn around and say, well, okay, I'm giving this person all the love, you know, that I can give and the other person's not treating me very kindly, then what do you do? Yes. Well, my sister, there are two things. I said at the beginning that there were five major principles. Mm. One is spiritual culture. Yeah. The first thing you have to understand is this. You are made in the likeness of a peace, an unshatterable peace. Yeah. The essential part of you is this peace. Nothing in the world can shatter you. Yeah. 
In other words, therefore, when you attain and start to work on your own spiritual cultivation, yeah. because you see, you say you give the person unconditional love. Mm -hmm. Let me ask you a question. Do you get angry? Are you a person who might worry, who might be fearful, who may be jealous? No. Okay. Oh, no, 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 no. I hear you. I agree. I don't know, but I'm just saying to no. you. See, when we speak of unconditional love, yeah. we first have to understand that we, meaning you and mm -hmm. I, yeah. have to go through a transformation. Right. We have to go through a deprogramming. Mm -hmm. Because, you see, what is giving unconditionally? You see that? You know, money, is it your anything? money? Is it your intellect? Is yeah. it your affection? Yeah. Right? So, and the truth of the matter is, let's get back to the question. Mm -hmm. If you are giving unconditionally to someone, yeah. and that person no longer gives back anything or share the, your value system. Remember, I said love is giving, seeking nothing in return. Yeah. But a relationship is also built on the ability to be in harmony and to share with someone. Right. So the highest principle is love. Mm -hmm. right? But there's also, the, one has to also be able to share right. in, in a like manner. It okay. is nice to receive though, isn't it? It is yeah. nice to have that love reciprocated. Yeah. Re re reciprocity is a major part of a relationship. Yes. Right? You, you understand me? When I kiss you, I don't want you to sit there like a pagoda. I want you to kiss me back. Mm -hmm. right? yeah. That's not what I'm talking about. You, you understand that? Right. There, there, there is a time for reciprocity, mm -hmm. but the, the principle that you should be working towards a marriage yeah. is that principle of giving, seeking nothing in return. Right. Okay, so if you are in a relationship where the man is not sharing, mm -hmm. you see, we started off in the middle because one of the things we have to come back with is how did you enter that relationship? What was your criteria for marrying that man? Right. Did you choose? And therefore you may have chosen and involved yourself in, with someone who is not capable, has not yet developed himself right. to yes. share love, to be part of a loving, caring relationship. And that is because our criteria for choosing a mate Mm -hmm. We started from the wrong premise. Yes. So, in that respect, if you are in a relationship with someone who is not sharing, mm -hmm. one of the things you want to make sure is that you are not damaged by that relationship. Right. And the way to prevent yourself from being damaged is to develop your spiritual um, muscles. Right. In other words now, it's not what happens to you, but it's how you react to what is happening. Okay. You see that? And if you are, are cultivated and you have certain spiritual principles, mm -hmm. then you will leave that relationship if you have to leave the relationship without damage, without pain. Yeah. Because you'd have left with the right reasons and in the correct manner. Because there's a way to leave a relationship. There's a way to enter and there's a way to leave. Without okay. the, all the anger and the hurt as well. Exactly. How do you do that? With <laughs> because, because you see, people... Okay, can you see, she, she just asked you a question there. How do you do that? You know, if you're, if you're with somebody who you think, yeah, this is the person I want to spend the rest of my life with, and eventually you outgrow that person because maybe you're moving um, spiritually and they're not. Maybe they don't know how to. And um, how do you then leave without causing the hurt to you? I mean, it's... You never hurt anyone. No, but nobody ever hurt as well, you. Because obviously you're going to feel hurt to a certain extent because you know at the end of the day we are human and we do have human feelings and it doesn't matter how okay you, you to, see you there know, we go I did say with you, I'm not a human being a human being is not a reality a human being is a concept right it's a way of thinking if you okay. think you're human, then you're going to feel pain. Okay. Okay? Yeah. You see, we have to go back. You see, this is why when I say we have to return to an Afrocentric philosophical understanding of life itself. Right. Because we are running around with certain ideas that purports to be intelligent. Right. But what they're doing is they're coming out of a Western paradigm. Okay. Western paradigm says, I'm a human being. Right. No, I'm a man made in the likeness of God. Yeah. You see that? Therefore, what is human? 
A human by definition is subject to failure. That's true. A human by definition is limited. I am made in the likeness of an infinite, unlimited being. So I, I know this is kind of, you know, it's a, it's a heavy response in terms of the theology. As I said, when I found in, I just, I'm sitting here listening to, you know, the way you're speaking, and I'm just like, wow. You know, there's people out there who really, you know what I mean? Well, not every day you can go out and speak to somebody and get these responses. It makes so much sense, and it's like, I'm just, I'm just connected to you straight away, and, you know, it's just so lovely to hear. Do I put energies, my sister? Wow. And, 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 and that question that you ask is a very, very important question. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because many of us found ourselves in those situations. I know yeah. I did. My, my first wife, she broke my heart. Yeah. You, you with me? Yeah. Um, you know, and I was like devastated. It was like the whole world came to an end. Yeah. You know, because I'd given and given and then the next thing I know, something else was happening. Yeah. Now, I, how did I deal with that? Mm -hmm. I had to find God. But God who would answer and talk to me and show me that, wait a minute, she didn't hurt you. It's your thinking yeah, about that situation that That's created your pain. And in fact, it could be said that she may have prepared the way for you to enter into your priesthood. Are, are you doing this interview or am I? <laughs> Both of us. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. I, I would come to you for some more counsel. Thank you. That was, that's absolutely true. Okay, um, Marisha. Why? Yes. The situation serves to further. Yes. Okay, we have some more callers coming through. Thank you, my sister, for calling. Oh, I, I thank really you. Appreciate thank you, Marisha. All right, thanks. Thank okay, you. Bye. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Remember, if you want to call in, it New is Star Birmingham. Radio. Yes, New Star Radio. Your first opportunity on the On a Level Talk Show. In fact, I'm sure on New Star Radio to speak with an African priest. Hello, caller. Greetings, Uncle Elder Eva here. Greetings, Mama Eva. How are you doing? I'm good. Okay, what's your question for today? Greetings, Clemency. How are you? I'm very well indeed. And greetings to your your queen as well. Yes, we'll do. Yes, our partner. Yeah, I just want to touch on uh, what you said that uh, your first wife broke your heart. Yes. Well, you allowed that to happen, didn't you? Of course, I wasn't spiritually developed. Okay, thank you. You answered that. Now, I just want you to give us a little bit of... Um, have you yourself got a special breathing technique before going into meditation? If so, does that way apply to women as well? Because you did touch on that before when I saw you the last time. I don't want to go into that on this particular show, if I be honest with you, if we start talking about meditation and breathing and things like that. Okay. I will give people a number and an email address at the end of the show in which they can contact the All Cell Set Society okay. and ask for you know more specific questions. Tonight we're really trying to get to an understanding of our relationships, how we can create the kind of relationships that we want in our life from using an African paradigm. Oh, that's fair enough. Okay. All right. Yeah, I wasn't aware of that. Okay. okay. Thank you very much for the call. Yeah, you're welcome. Okay. Okay. Now, I'm sure before we went to the break, Brother Kevin C, that you was actually asking me a question. Yes, the question yeah. I was um, saying to you is that, you know, when we were talking about oracles, and in the sense that we can use our mind yes. to make decisions. And I was saying to you that you, you meet a man, yes. and this man is 30-something years old, mm -hmm. he's never cheated in his life, yes. hard-working man, mm -hmm. never smoked drugs, mm -hmm. never did anything untoward. Hello. Can that then say that he would never do it? Nope. Okay. You see, that would be like, yes, this is rational. Mm -hmm. He's a very nice man, well-educated, blah, blah, blah. Yes, and, you know, everything else is fine. So let me marry him. Mm. And then something happens. Yes. It's something totally. Where with an oracle reading, the oracle reading will tell you what is likely to happen. Yes. And so what do they say? If you prepare, you don't fail. Yes. Fail to prepare is preparing to fail. Now, one of the tenets of the Osarian religion, Priest Kevin C., is that each and every um, experience in life can be viewed as an opportunity and vehicle for spiritual development yes. that will eventually lead to the realization of the indwelling divinity. Now, yes. with that understanding in mind, how can we use our relationships as a means to realize that indwelling divinity, our oneness with God? How do we actually make that journey? Well, for example, 
example. Let me give you an example. Mm -hmm. If you, you're married to a man and, you know, you have this jealousy thing about you. Yes. Right? You see him talking to another woman and all of a sudden this energy, this tension rises up inside of you. Now, you are blaming the man for that energy that you're feeling. Yes. When in fact, it is something, an imbalance within you that you need to deal with. So your husband or that situation is teaching you that you have to detoxify. You have to let go of those feelings. Because those feelings are not in your best interest. Yes. Because that sense of anger or anxiety is an illness in itself. It's affecting your liver chi and therefore creating an imbalance in your energy field. So therefore, every time you get into that jealousy mode, you're making yourself sick. Sick, yes. So, and then why are you jealous? Because you want to own and control. Now, why? If God gave you freedom of choice, and free will, why would you want to control someone else? Yes. So the first thing is, you will now see that you have a major issue of trust, of a lack of peace within your own self. And therefore, that needs to be corrected, even from a physiological perspective, even from a health perspective, mm -hmm. that, that you are creating illness within your body. So that alone, that situation of jealousy, is a teaching situation for you now to change and develop yourself yes because imagine if every time that man knows that you're jealous and he wants to get at you he just talks to a woman and suddenly you're sick again yes and so he controls you you would be like a, a rubber band yes. he pulls you and you jump so you now become a puppet yes why because you are allowing your animal and human attributes to manifest itself in this particular negative emotional expression. You know, it's so interesting how you use that word animal, because most of us, we wouldn't look at things like rage, anger, jealousy as belonging to the animal aspect of our spirit. Well, all you have to do from a psychobiological perspective is that when you are angry and upset, your rate of breathing is 666, which is what they say. Is the, the, devil. the mark of the, the beast. Yes, mark of and the beast. And what is 666? Six, six, six. 6 plus 6 plus 6 equals 18 breaths per minute, which is you, your brain, cycling at the gamma of 36 cycles per second. And therefore, you are animal. You're devilish in the way you think and act. So that's what that means. Oh, I've never heard it broken down like that before. Oh, yeah. <laughs> We have to bring you back on, you know that. Okay, when, you, when you're ready, you know. Raoul Nefram and the Shechem or Shechem is, a, is a, a master teacher. Yes. And I have, you know, I've been a, a dutiful student. Well, so I'm I am just sharing with you the ancient teachings as revealed yes. to Raoul Nefram. Okay. This, well, is not my, that's, this has nothing to do with my brilliance or my intelligence. Okay. I'm, I'm a, just a good student. We'll give thanks for your humbleness. My, okay, my let's go back to our phone lines. Hello, caller. Hi, um, I'm just calling to say that um, my husband's got some issues with distrust and jealousy, and I just want to know where could this stem from? Okay, who am I speaking to? Isis. Isis. Okay, you should change that to all set. <laughs> Yes. You, you know, ISIS is the Greek corruption of Orset. The yeah. Yes, Orset is the original African name, and the Greeks corrupted it to ISIS. Anyway, yeah, you know, you never called in for that. <laughs> okay, so you, you're saying the priest came and see your husband has some issues around trust? That's right, yeah. And you're trying to find out where does this lack of trust come from? Yeah, because I haven't given him any reason. Uh, well, lack of trust, my dear, comes from self-esteem. Low self-esteem? Low self-esteem. You see, when somebody is afraid of losing that which they treasure, you see, that's yeah. when the jealousy and those behaviors come in. And that's because the person is not aware of their own divine nature, of what they're capable of, who they are. And because of that, you know, they, they hold on to certain things. Oh, women can't be trusted. You know, why? It's fear. What is he afraid of? You see, that's where we have to go deeper. 
he would need to sit down with an African counselor, somebody like myself coming from an Afrocentric perspective, to really um, go down into where is this lack of trust being generated from. You see, because he may have had a relationship with someone that he loved and they did something, you know, in their, in their youthfulness and that then created a sense of you can't trust anyone, okay? And that is because also that he may have invested or invested his happiness in you or that person and you should never, ever expect anyone to bring you happiness. Because happiness cannot be given or bequeathed from anyone. Happiness is in you. For you to be happy, you can't wait for money, material resources, education, or a mate to bring you happiness. Mm -hmm. And maybe that's where everything is with this man, where he is invested his happiness in his wife and is afraid because of his own self-esteem, of his own understanding of his nature. So consequently, you know, I always say that people who get into a relationship without understanding themselves first will always create and behave in a manner which is deleterious to the development and engendering of a beautiful relationship. Does that answer your question, Isis? Or yeah, set? yeah, I'd want to know what I could do to help him there. There's nothing that you can do to help him, except point him into the direction of a spiritual training, spiritual development, or, um, you know, proper counseling. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, and, thank you. And at the same time, remain your loving, beautiful self and embody that love. Because sometimes people need to lean on someone before they start to stand on their own. Mm -hmm. But he actually needs to begin to work on self-development. Because that's where the problem is. The problem is not in you. And even if you weren't a trusting, beautiful woman and, and a woman of fidelity, he, it, he still would have that problem of trust. Yeah, well, I'm trying, so best I can do at the moment. Okay, well at the end of the show I'm going to tell people how to get in contact with Priest Kevin C, alright? Okay, well thank you very much for advice. Okay, Isis. All the best, sister. You too, bye. You're bye. welcome. Bye. Bye. Etepu. She sounds so gentle when she talks. Yes. Yes, what does that mean when you say Hetepu? Hetepu means peace and many blessings. Peace and many blessings, yeah. okay. Hetepu. Okay. Um, You were talking about counselling. How does your approach, an African-centered approach to counselling, differ from, for example, a traditional, like a, a psychotherapist or a psychiatrist or a traditional counsellor? How does your approach differ? Well, my approach comes from the fact that you are a divine being. Oh, okay, but first I and foremost. Look at the principles within you, which yeah. are latent, mm -hmm. and then work at that. See, see, when a person, you know, say, I'm afraid, then that is coming from a lack of knowledge of self. Yes. You see that? So what you have to do is to restore or help that person to restore its likeness with God or her likeness with God by understanding the principles that they must live by. Yes. And the first thing you have to establish within yourself is that you are an unshatterable peace. Yes. Un until when you, you really understand the law of our men, you see that? Yes. See, remember, when we talk about you are a being which is composed of a self and not self. Two aspects of the being. Two aspects. The conscious, conscious and the unconscious. Will, right? Yes. A consciousness and will is devoid of energy and matter. Therefore, consciousness and will has no feelings. The I has no feelings. What feels is the energy matter part of being. Is that the unconscious part? Yes. What they the call the subconscious mind? Yes, that's the mind. Yes. You see that? That's the lower and the upper mind. So unless you have an understanding of who you are... And how you are made up. And how you are made up, then you are going to accept that you can be angry. And it's natural to be afraid. But if you're angry, if you're afraid, it, it damages you. 
and that which damages you cannot be natural to you. I find a lot in the teachings with the New Age spiritual teachings, they're talking a lot now about the two aspects of God, the unconscious aspect of God, the conscious part of God, of which we are made in the same manner. Right. But they won't tell you necessarily that you're a divine being. They'll just say, when you want to create things in life, remember that the un unconscious part of you, which is God in its unmanifested form, um, can create anything in your life. So you go to that aspect of your spirit to bring forth the things you want How? into your life. You see, I understand yes. the New Age yeah. people because a lot of them have studied the committee principles. Yes. And they've brought some of that into, um, you know, their books. Yes. The thing you have to understand is a lot of these people write books. They're well, very good with the Sebekian skills. Yes. But they don't live this Left way brain skilled. They yes. don't know, so they talk. And it sounds wonderful. And that's a problem with African people as well. We've become Westerners. We read something and we think we know it, mm -hmm. right? We think we know because we've got information. No, there's another side of it. Information must then turn into action. But some people may say that with those same teachings, like Esther and Jerry Hicks, um, Louise Al Hay, Wayne Dyer, Marianne Wilson, that they find them very helpful. Of course. Yes. But you see, what happens to those people when you look at them, how has, they, has it changed their lives? Mm -hmm. You know, you say these truisms and these nice words, and you feel empowered, right? Because yes. they're all belief systems. Yes. And you can believe anything. Okay. You see that? I can believe that I can fly. Yes. Now, you can't tell me I can't fly. Okay. I believe I can fly, right? Now, of course, I'm going to jump off the, the Eiffel Tower or somewhere like that, and I'll find out. <laughs> you know, the law of gravity will kick in. Okay, but you're saying that like, your system, the Osirian religion, is very different to what these guys are coming with. Absolutely. Uh, okay, let's go to our phone lines once again. Hello, caller. Hi. Uh, Hi, thank you for holding. Who am I speaking to? No problem, it's James. Okay, James, what would you like uh, to say to Priest Kevin C? Yeah, um, I'm, I'm getting more and more confused because what it is, it's the, the westernized teaching. What he's teaching me now is, is something that is kind of conflicting. <clears throat> I just wanted to know basically what really is the unconscious mind because I've learned this from time uh, from, from a younger age um, all these words but there's not really um, a definition of really from an African perspective what is the unconscious oh, mind there, there, there is like a definition in this a book definition, but yes. how does it work how what is my unconscious what is the unconscious you know unconscious mind of of an individual what is it how can I really know when I'm using it or how can I know what when it's a part of me you know I can identify sometimes when I'm using the, the unconscious if there is a such thing as you know the unconscious okay. mind well there's a couple of things in there my brother I know which, which, which how to use the, the word the center in a sentence but what is it, is it, let, it, does it let him answer James okay there's no such thing as conscious mind or unconscious mind right that's what's confusing me okay okay the mind is a tool that you use. You, you with me? The mind is not you. Yeah, I'm with you, yeah. You understand me? So yeah, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm understand so far, go ahead. What they're really saying is that there is a self and a not self, right? Meaning that the spirit, which is what they really mean by the unconscious mind, the spirit is what does, but does not know. Right. You see that? The self okay, knows, yeah. but does not do. Okay. In other words, you know, you, you've heard this recent thing, they talk about this law of attraction stuff. Mm. Yes. Okay, mm. crazy stuff still, but anyway. Mm. So, the spirit is the great doer in life. Yeah, okay. You instruct it. It does not know, so that's why they, that's why they say it's unconscious. But it is a doer. You see, in the Osirian right. religion, that would be akin to Ra. Not Ray, but Ra, energy matter which does things in life, but has to be instructed by the self. When I want to be successful in a situation, I sit and I meditate, right. and I impress upon my spirit, my Ra force, what I want it to do. Okay, so... And now, the spirit goes out and does it, but I don't know how the spirit is going to do it. All I do is give it its instructions, follows right. my instructions, and then does it work. So I so command the spirit. Remember... Get more clarity from that. Could I ask you this one question? Can you 
explain it from a scientific perspective because that's where I'm coming from right now because I, I do not know anything about an African perspective. But when you say not scientific, what do you mean? Are you meaning um, quantitative science, protons, electrons and neutrons? I mean something that you can, um, that is not metaphysical. Can I, can I can ask can... you a question? How do yes. you know something? How do I know something? Yes. By feelings. By experiencing it. Yeah, yes, by feeling it, yeah. Tell your spirit, instruct your spirit to do something, and it will do it for you. How did you get home this evening? How did I go home? Yeah. Well, on the bus. Well, how did you start? Um, With an idea, I'm going home. By thinking, by thinking. Uh, by, uh, exactly. I thought uh, three times. Non-physical. I, I knocked my feet together three times, and I thought three times. You, you said, I'm going home. Yeah. You started well, no, before. Well, well, I thought it, yeah. I think thought it became like an action. Yeah, yeah. The non-physical I, before I stepped the physical, on the bus, I thought I was going to The noumenal yeah. to the phenomenal. Okay. You see that? That's how you know in a scientific way. So the unconscious is um, thinking without speaking and seeing without seeing or something. Is that what you're saying? No, I'm not saying that. Okay. I'm saying I'm conscious because I will my feet okay. walk. Then my feet walk. Can you give it a specific terminology, like scientific terms? No, I can't do that because I don't think in those terms. <laughs> you that doesn't mean it's, it's unscientific. Because, you see, okay. what the Western people are doing is trying to make a difference between the metaphysical and the physical. They are the laws that apply to the physical science, to hard science, chemistry, physics, and so on, and they are mm -hmm. laws that apply to the metaphysical world. You're making me dizzy. All right, okay. Yes? Okay, understood, understood. I'll have to... Um call you after the show if i could get your number yes sure. i'll do that after the show james thanks yeah. for the call no problem okay thank you so come and see you're saying that you don't think the laws of attraction work no why not <laughs> i think they work we're gonna have well, to reason work, this out yes why don't they work why hasn't it worked for everybody because maybe not everybody applies it no that's not why not if does, it, does everybody this is a wonderful science, does a everybody does all ev you've got to do is think what you want you know why? Because you're thinking as a human being. Uh -huh. And a human being, you know, cannot be successful in life. But it's when God that is successful. But from when I look at the um, people like Esther and Jerry Hicks, they do it from that you're a divine being, not that you're a human being. I don't know these people. Okay. I don't know what they say, okay. I don't know what they do. Oh, because um, well, they're the main is, proponents what, what of the law of attraction. Of a divine being. Yes. Um, you know, is it the universe? Is it What is it? Yes. You know, I don't know. Let me show you something, right? Mm -hmm. People use terms that in themselves have no reality behind them. Yes. Let me give you a word that has no reality behind them. Democracy. Democracy. Okay, yes. Everybody thinks there's something called a democracy. But mm -hmm. has anybody experienced democracy? Nope. <laughs> I haven't. <laughs> you understand me? But everybody thinks, oh, this is democracy. Right? We use terms that we think that there is a reality behind them. My divine being, what is that? Break me down the divine being. Show me the divine being. Let me experience that. And that's what the young man was asking me. Mm -hmm. But what he has to understand is that you have to first, you know, if you think about something, the way to prove it, like we do in, in, in hard science, is to test our hypothesis. Right? We say, oh, we think this is so, and then we test it out. And yes. then it works, and we prove it. So it's theory, praxis. Yes. You see that? You okay. first have to conceptualize yeah. and then act. And then you prove it. Okay, let's get back to our main discussion around relationships. Yes. Is there such a thing as a perfect soulmate? Yes, if the person is a God man, God yes. woman. Okay, and, and, <laughs> and how would one go about attracting that perfect soulmate? If you are the living embodiment of the 11 laws of God, yes. then you will choose the right partner. And when you say perfect, yes. that person then will bring to you the challenges that will make you a God person. So, yes. you see, people say perfect because what they're doing is they don't want any problems. You see that? Mm -hmm. That's what they're talking about. My perfect soulmate. What does your perfect soulmate do? Mm -hmm. Rub your back, kiss you, and everything is unky dory That's boredom. <laughs> you want, you want, you you want dynamism. Uh -huh. You want situations. You know, my wife is a perfect soulmate. Yes. Now you know because she challenges me. 
Yes. You know, she keeps me on my divine path. Yes. You, you with me? So when people say perfect soulmate, yes. do they mean somebody that doesn't r ruffle their feathers? I, I guess they mean what the right it, person or do they for mean them. Somebody that is complementary to them yes. and and helps them to grow, and they do likewise. If that's what they mean, then there is. Yes, there is such a thing. Of course. I, I've had a few people calling over the past few weeks. Um, people who are single and they say they've been doing all manner of things to try and attract this so-called perfect relationship How about to the them. Attraction? Why is not working? I don't think those persons even know about it or actually deal with it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you know, okay. What, what I'm advice? Only, I'm, I'm being facetious. My, my apologies. <laughs> what advice, Kevin C, would you give to those persons? First, put yourself into a spiritual program. Yes. You know, change your thinking. You see that the first thing that a person has to do is to change the way they think and they will then change the way they act. Mm. And if they're thinking from a particular perspective on a Western definition of what a relationship is supposed to be and what marriage is supposed to be, then they are in trouble. Yes. They have to put themselves through a program of re-identifying, of, you know, giving up the negative thought patterns, mm -hmm. you know, the behavioral patterns that they have. You see, everybody wants a diamond, mm. but they're a copper. Now, copper don't attract diamonds. You understand me? Yes. You want a perfect mate. You have to be perfect yourself. Mm -hmm. Like attracts like. Now, you were talking about that if you want the perfect soulmate, they have to be the embodiment of the 11 laws. Yes. What are the 11 laws, because I know some people who would say that they've attracted their soulmate and they know nothing about these 11 laws. Well, you but know what to we them, say? they would find that they... they a tear. Thank you, God. Oh, okay. Are you with me? Mm -hmm. so, you know, but that doesn't mean that you don't have to... When you've attracted a soulmate now, work at it. Yes. Get better. So what are those 11 laws that you say we should embody? Bef well, the first law is the law of peace. Yes. Which is your essential nature. Second law is the law of unity, oneness with all. Yes. The third law is the law of what I want for myself, I want for others. The fourth law is the law of destiny. Mm -hmm. The fifth law is the law of love. The sixth law is the law of just compensation. The seventh law is the law of freedom. I'm free to choose, made in the likeness of God. Right? The eighth law is that, you know, joy is my essential nature, and I can cultivate the joy within in any situation. The ninth law is I use my, my God-given talents to praise God, to communicate, right? And the tenth law is to care for others as others care for me. Okay. The eleventh law is the law of God. Yes. It's the physical health, the law of God. So okay. these are eleven laws. There's a book by Ra Oneframen, which is called Ma'at, the Eleven Laws of God, that one should really get all of and read. And I, I just distilled that in a, in a, in a short time. And perhaps one day I can come back and talk about the 11 laws of God, not 10. Yes, most certainly, most certainly. And are these books available from the All Say Our Set Society in yes, London? Yes, they are. We're here in London and um, you can yeah. reach us um, okay. on a number of websites. And um, that you can reach me on 07951 Okay. I've also seen one for the All Sales Set UK at AOL. Yes, that's, com. Another, that's, that's, that's another address. There. That's another address. Uh -huh. Okay, excellent. Um, when looking at marriage, yes. from a Kometian perspective, what would the purpose of marriage be? Is it the same thing to recognize your indwelling divinity? Yes, help that's you? one of the purposes. The other purpose is to create the nucleus of the nation. Yes. Because a family is the nucleus of a nation and that if you look at the black community and i i use that word sparingly mm. because the word community means if you break it down it means a common union mm. right and i don't see too much of that common union in the so-called black community we're not working together as a group of people to yeah. educate our people we have no schools we have no institutions you know and mm. the major institution the one of marriage is null and void, it's being destroyed, yes, decimated. Pe people are meant to be taught about that. That's right. You see, education, mm -hmm. to get married, one needs to go through a process of education. And that's what is lacking.
people just jump into marriage, this man, this woman, on their own, and they don't understand. So they live their lives without a connection. In Brazil, there's a term that they use called destafinado, meaning a disconnection. And we have been disconnected from African culture and African spirituality, hence the problems that we as black people find ourselves in in the world. Mm. It's not only in Britain. Yes, it's all over the world. You know, one in two marriages fail in Britain. Mm. One in two fail. Which shows you that the institution of marriage perhaps is not working in this country. Not the institution, the culture that houses that institution. It's, it's not working. Someone said to me the other day, um, I was out shopping and they said, you know, I heard your program where you were all talking about relationships. And he says to me, I wanted to call in and just say to you all that culture means to cultivate and we're not cultivating the right thing so we don't have the right culture. Yes, culture yeah. is in the word like agriculture. That's what you do, right? You yes. want to grow something, you clean up the weeds, you get the bed ready. You get the soil ready, you prepare the soil, and then you plant the seed. And that's what we have to do again as African people. We have to rethink, re-strategize how we get into relationship. You see, for example, Mm -hmm. you're looking for a mate. That young woman who said she's tried everything to get into a relationship. What was her shopping list? (laughs) Right? What did she have? Did she have, number one, the person must be spiritual? Mm-hmm. Number two, have they got an AIDS certificate? Huh? A what certificate? AIDS, HIV certificate. Oh, right okay. now, anybody you're going to hook up with, they got to present an HIV certificate. Mm. You don't jump in the bed with anybody without having an HIV certificate. That's your life. Yes. So what is on your shopping list? Do you want a non-smoker or a smoker? What are you shopping for? You see that? And that's what people are doing. They're not thinking about a mate. Oh, the, he needs to be good looking, she needs to be pretty. That doesn't translate into a good wife, a good husband. Yes. He's got to be buff with muscles bulging all over. That doesn't even translate into good performance in the midnight hour. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> if you want to call in and speak to Priest Kevin C, you can do so. We just have eight minutes left before our show ends today. So be sure to get your calls in as quick as you can. Do you think, Kevin C, that the lack of spiritual culture, the lack of African spirituality in our um, so-called communities across this country is the reason why we have so many single parent homes and broken homes? Without a shadow And even without. teenage pregnancies? Without, you know, see, lack of spirituality. One of the principles I said about a relationship was healthy lifestyle. You see that? Yes. You look at the food. When you walk into the black community, what are the shops you see? You see fast food stores. We are eating garbage. Garbage in, garbage out. Yes. Right? So too much sugar creates anger, stresses out your pancreas, the diabetes rate in the black community. Too much salt depresses your energy. Right? Bad oils. We fry foods. We eat McDonald's. We eat Wimpy. We whatever. I don't know about yes. Wimpy. Maybe Wimpy died a long time ago. Yes. But whatever they call him, Burger King. Burger or King Burger and something. McDonald's, yes. You know, we have one Wimpy in the city chicken, center. Chicken, chicken place all over the place. Yeah, KFC. Now, even the food that we're eating are filled with female hormones. Our men are sprouting breasts. Yes. Right? You know, we're having... 40 million women in the world who don't enjoy sex anymore. Mm -hmm. We have 50 to 60 million men who are having performance problems. Yes, impotent. Look at our diet. Yes. So when we think about all of this, these fast food that we're eating is creating erratic, you know, nervous systems. So hence the issues that we have. So we're not even looking at the fundamentals for good relationships or and to maintain relationships our diet is one of the major things social accountability who are you accountable to mm. you cheat on your husband nobody can tell you anything because you're a big woman you're a big man there is no social accountability so consequently relationships you know when things were going wrong in the old days 
You went to see Mama and Papa. Yes. You went to see Auntie Louise down the road, who was an elder, who had experience, who could help you to see how you should behave. That's and then, you know, in a community, if you have a community, then you have respect for the yes. elders. You have respect okay. for your peers. So you're not going to do anything. Can we see? I don't mean to cut you. The phone lines are going like mad. We just oh, have a few okay. minutes left. Let's take this call. Hello, caller. Um, greetings, Sister Ancobia. How are you doing? Greetings. I'm fine. How are you doing? I'm Who am I speaking to? I'm um, Sister Jill. Oh, greetings, Jill. How are you? I'm not too bad, thanks. Oh, great. What would you like to say to Kevin C? Well, greetings, Brother Kevin C. Greetings, my sister. Nice to hear your voice again. I'll say again? It's nice to hear your voice again. I um, actually saw you at ALD. Okay, wonderful. Yeah. Nice to hear um, from you. I know we're short of time now, so That's I just okay. wanted to ask a quick question. Yes. yes. Um, how do you think that we can move forward um, as a race? in regards to developing ourselves, um, you know, in regards to healthy relationships and so forth. I mean, this is for people who don't have access to the other calls and other spiritual divination tools down here. So, you know, in them, I know you're based in London, so I was wondering, you know, what advice could you give to um, people, you know, like ourselves here, who want to develop the healthy relationships, but, you know, we don't have the tools in order to um, progress in the area? Well, the first thing to do, my sister, is if you have a group of people that are interested in, I will send a priest, a priestess, to your neighborhood, wherever you are, and start the classes in spiritual development and so on to assist you, because that's what we're here to do. Excellent, yeah. That's really, that's really the work. Right. Now, um, I was going to suggest to Sister Oncovia that one of the things I could do is come down and do a seminar in Birmingham on relationships. Well, yes. I'd love that. Yes. And so we are prepared because that's one of the reasons why we're in training. That's right. We're in training to serve our communities, and it, we will travel wherever we are. I mean, I have a group that I've okay. established in South Africa. Yes. Um, so okay, we're, out, we're running out of time. Regular. Okay, well, all the best, yeah, and hopefully I'll speak to you soon. Okay. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much, Jill, for that call. Let's just take this last caller, and I'm going to ask this caller to make, make your point ever so quick, please, caller. Yeah. Um, uh, James, you've called in yeah. already, haven't you? No, but it's because I need to uh, know okay. the question. Okay, I'm going to move on. I'm going to move on because you've called in already. Please, just... No, no, no. Really no. Quick, I'm, I'm going to give out Chemistry's number really, and you really. can call the organisation. <laughs> okay, I'm not going to take that call because we really are running out of time. Chemistry, yes. last word with you. Give our listeners something that they can take away from today's show and also any books that perhaps they could uh, read. Well, uh, what I would like to say to you all is that do not accept and believe that there is no African paradigm. There's one in place. We've been living it now for 36 years in 36 cities in the United States and all over the world, including London, Bermuda, South Africa, Canada, St. Kitts, all over the Caribbean. So there is something in place. We've lived it. We've proven it. And it's there for all of us. Um, books to read from right now is... There's a book by Rao Neframan which is called Afrocentric Guide to a Spiritual Union. That's yes. one of the main, main books that one could read. Um, there's the Meduna Tear, Volume 1, Volume 2, Volume 3. I'm just reading Volume 3. Absolutely amazing. Absolutely. Yes, the key to miracles. The yes. Tear. There's a book called the Ma'at, the Eleven Laws of God. Yes. Tree of Life Meditation book. Um, you know, Not Out of Greece. And uh, many other books that the Shechem or Shechem Ra'an Ephraimen has shared with us and these are all available from the Saraset Society in London. Okay. So um, that's what you need to do. You, you know, we really need to understand that our ancestors, the Shep Su, the sacred dead, left us a legacy. Yes. An undying legacy. A living legacy. Yes. See that? We knew the day would come where we would be scattered across the world, which is one of the major reasons for the pyramids being built. Khufu knew what was going on, so he left us a celestial clock. And in that clock and in that, you know, fantastic astronomical machine, left the teachings, the indelible teachings. They're there for all of us to embrace. Well, Kevin we see, I want to say to thank you ever... Our way of thinking and embrace yeah. an African paradigm. Can we see? I want to say thank you ever so much for coming on to the show today. Well, I am so grateful and thank yes. you for the opportunity yes. to share. Yes, I'm sure it won't, be the, it won't know, be the last I time. I that um, my person was able to impart what you wanted 
Yes, oh. most certainly. I'll definitely be having the All Sales Set Society back on this program for certain. Remember, if you want to contact the All Sales Set Society, it's All Set, A U S A R, All Set, A U S C T U K, at AOL.com or at Hotmail.com. And your number again, they can contact you on Kem and C. 07951252427. And on that note, we're going to say, Hetta Poo! Hetta Poo! Thank, thank you once again. Much. And we say, Keru Nefer. Good night. Okay, good night. Okay. 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 All right, folks, that's the Other Level Talk Show. We'll be back next week. Take care. I was very moved by Legrand's statement about the state of the black man in the world today. But that that be simply a warning, it is not a prophecy. We have been in worse states, but we have survived. I am sure, as has happened in all the history of man, we will find an antidote. But it has taken longer, it is far more difficult to find an antidote to racism. The destruction that has occurred, the shattering of the psyche, is something extremely painful. And you see it all over the world, not only here in America, you go into Africa and you realize the distance, the distance, the remoteness from history, from a sense of what one was, what one is. And you have to become aware of the fact that one of the most frightening things, apart from any disadvantages we may suffer, one of the most frightening things we find in many of our young people is they have lost the sense of worth. They've lost a sense of seriousness. They've lost a sense of the capacity and potential that lie within them because they have been crushed far too soon by the appearance of impotence and powerlessness. Only history can bring that back. You cannot look at the plane of the present time and recover that sense of power and worth. When I was a boy in my teens, I almost lost that. I was driven by a fierce rage because I had been told that as a Negro, I was only 10,000 years old. I was the last person to appear on earth. I knew no better. We did not know anything more than that. And that the Negro was incapable of adult intellectual development and that the cranial sutures of his brain closed down at an early age, arresting further development. I was 14 when I read that. I believed every word of it. I had absolutely no evidence to the contrary. And I was so frightened, I decided I have about seven years left before my brain closed down. So I learned everything I could in that seven years. It didn't, it didn't work the same way with other young men. They stopped. When they learned those facts, they knew that they had limits. They put limits on themselves. They created prisons. That, those words, that philosophy, that assumption, those notions created prisons within us so that they could never regenerate themselves. They could never resurrect themselves. They could never find a wholeness within themselves. That shattered world was absolute. That is not the case. We are extremely fortunate in that we have the men and the women who can find the pieces again. Even as Isis looked for the pieces of Osiris and bring about a new wholeness of the psyche so that we can start again and resurrect ourselves. Because that is the great message that came out of Africa. Addresses issues that matter to you. Join Ancobia and guests every Monday from 6 to 7 p.m. 